Welcome to the unveiling and finale of my contribution into the Porsche Group Build hosted by Chuck's Hobby Spot, BG's Model Workshop, and the Lucas E Channel. Here's where we left off. The Porsche Junior 108 tractor had been transformed into a twin turbo flat 12 powered monster. Would it plow? Very likely, but not very well. There was still a lot of fine tuning needed before paint. I was hoping for very little surprises when it came to final assembly. One of the last things I created for it was this sissy bar mounted to the seat for only the slightest amount of driver retention. Painting the engine was first, and with so many different metallic shades going on here, it was time to open the box of crayons. Alclad was used here. What flavors? Nearly all of them. The fiberglass air cooling sections of the 91730 engine would be a fun painting challenge. I picked these colors from Vallejo and just started blending them until it looked right to me. Next came the detailing. Various wire sizes were gathered, then the tedious job of making 24 plug wires with boots for the dual magnetos started. I needed to take a break from that project, so it was time for some more paint. I knew the color palette from the beginning. It would get something along the lines of Mark Donahue's iconic Can-Am dominating Sunoco livery. The hood got scanned via a flatbed scanner to get it into the computer. The top is a bit fuzzy, but it got me in the ballpark to start drawing the vector graphics that would get printed on decal paper. These red stripes are all designed to go over yellow since the ink is quite transparent. The blue and yellow were custom mixed by Splash Paints since they are currently not in their lineup. This paint is wonderful to spray, with both colors going on very thin and opaque. The yellow was applied first, and then I did a decal test to see how the red looked as well as how the decal would behave over the compound shape of the hood. Next, the decal art was used as templates to transfer onto bare metal foil for paint masks. These had to be precise because the red decal would disappear if applied over the dark blue paint. After peeling off all the foil, the colors look great, with very minimum bleed through. Something I really wanted for the tractor would be some turbo fan wheel covers, similar to what the 91730 had. This comical addition cracked me up, since the tractor only has mechanical drum style brakes on the rear. I contacted my good friend Bill Cunningham and asked if he could assist. I sent him this drawing of what I wanted and a link to a 3D file that he could manipulate. A few days later I got these wonderful printed parts ready for paint. These wheels really pushed the tractor over the top. With the rest of the tractor looking like it would come together as planned, it was back to finishing the engine details. Not only does it have the 24 plug wires, I also added a dozen fuel lines as well as various oil and electrical details. Once finished, the engine is a model in itself. I was pleased with how all the various metallic finishes, washes, and oil paint effects blend together. Now it was time to start the final assembly. There is a battery deep down in the chassis. The mechanic hates me when he has to remove all the turbo exhaust to replace it though. The steering is made up of RB motion rod ends with stainless steel tubing. The plan is still to have working steering. We'll see how that goes. Before the final clear coat, I mocked it up to see how I felt about it. I really liked everything except for the seat. It was just the wrong color scheme. Too much yellow. After repainting the seat, it got some red piping and a set of Edwards lap harnesses, just for a little bit of safety. The finished 91730 tractor looks like a cross between a quasi race car and a circus wagon, which seems appropriate considering the absurd blend of these two vehicles. At first glance, most might think it has a regular tractor drivetrain in there, but if you know, you know that there's something pretty special in there. I had a blast building it, and some of you might have seen its debut at the Dayton Concourse. I pushed it to get it done for that show, 
because the first time I went to a model show in Ohio, Randy Durr had just finished his magnificent Sunoco Camaro. So 30 years later, I came back with a Sunoco Porsche tractor. And that totally makes sense. I hope you enjoyed watching this build series. I've put the links to the previous parts in the description. So watch those too if you already haven't. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe. You know what to do because I have all kinds of model car stories to tell. Thanks for watching. You're still here? I guess you figured I'd put it on the turntable. It has a little party trick at the end. Enjoy! <laughs>